Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at what's meant by the average reaction rate and how we calculate related rates. Our objectives, well I guess I just said that on the previous slide so I won't repeat this. Um, so as an example of the average rate, um, before I jump in to the chemical example, let's look at more of a real world example. Every morning I drive roughly 25 miles to get to campus and it takes me roughly half an hour. So if you were to calculate my average rate, the average speed at which I was driving to get to campus, it would be 25 miles divided by half an hour because we normally report speeds in miles per hour. So 25 divided by half is 50. So on average, I'm going 50 miles an hour when I get to campus. But think for just a moment, one of the streets I take is Aquarina Springs. There are stoplights on Aquarina Springs, and I am certainly not going 50 miles an hour when I'm sitting at a stoplight. Then I'm going zero miles an hour. So there's a difference between the instantaneous rate, the, the rate at any given moment, um, and the average rate, which would be the entire trip distance divided by the time taken. Um, and so I might be going zero on Ocarina Springs, and I might be going 70 on Interstate 35. So on average, it works out to be about 50 but the instantaneous rates are very different. Well, we can look at some of these average rates for the chemical reaction that's given here, the reaction of methanol with hydrochloric acid to give chloromethane and water. And what we're given data-wise is time and the concentration of acid. Right, the H plus ion there in the table comes from the HCl. And so what we can do is pick various time intervals and calculate what the average rate of reaction for the time intervals are. To give myself a little more room to write, I'm going to actually work this out on the next slide. Okay, so here we are with that same data table. What I'm going to do is look at a couple different intervals. I'm going to look at this interval first between 0 and 79 minutes. And the concentration of acid goes from 1.85 to 1.67. When we do rates, at the general chemistry level. We use words to get around any signs. So those of you who've had calculus and are kind of cringing because in your calculus class you would have lost points for making what I'm about to do a positive number. I apologize. We get around with that by words in general chemistry because calculus is simply not a prerequisite for this. Um, those of you who have not had calculus, don't worry because everything that's calculus based in chapter 14, the calculus piece of it has already been done and you're just responsible for algebra, not for calculus. Um, the only reason I'm even bringing up the calculus side is that I found it very frustrating when I took an introductory economics class and they did not have calculus as a prerequisite for that class. It, it just was so frustrating when they were going to these great extremes to try to explain the math they were doing when all they needed to do was say this is a derivative, which is a calculus operation. So. Um, you, if you didn't have calculus, don't worry about it. Um, it's, it's all good, but I don't want to gaslight the people who've had calculus. All right, um, so what are we doing here? For this first interval, um, to find that average rate, we're going to look at the change in the hydrogen ion concentration over the elapsed time. And we're going to set all of these up to be positive numbers. I'm going to take the big one minus the little one. So 1.85 minus 1.67 for the hydrogen ion concentration. And for the time, we're going to do 79 minus 0. All right, so up there in the top, I'm going to have 1.85 minus 1.67. It's going to give us 0.18. And down there in the bottom, we have 79. Oh, I left off my units. It's molarity in the top and minutes in the bottom. And I'm out of room, so I'll write this down here. So I've got 0.18 divided by 79. And that's going to give me 
two, eight. Um, actually, I can probably only keep two sig figs looking at that math. Um, so we'll have 0 0.0023 molar per minute. So for that initial interval between 0 and 79 minutes, the average rate of the reaction was 0 0.0023 molar per minute. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, I'm going to change pen colors here. Let's go with orange. Um, let's look at the final interval. And let's calculate the average rate out here at the end. And when we're done, we're going to compare these. Are they going to be the same? Are they going to be different? Is there any kind of a trend? Can we explain it? OK, so for the orange marked data, we want to find change in concentration over the change in time. And that's going to give us uh, 1.30 minus 1.00 for the change in concentration. And for the change in time, it's going to be 632 minus 316. Again, we are deliberately doing this in such a way that we get positive numbers for both. So up there in the numerator, 1.3 minus 1 is going to give me 0.3. Sig fig wise, we can keep two decimal places. And then 632 minus 316. Whoops, let's plug that in right. 632 minus 316. Oh, and that's going to give us 316. And if I divide those two things, 0.3 divided by 316, I'm going to end up with 0 0.00095 molarity per minute. Now, how does that compare to the earlier interval? Well, it looks like it's a smaller number. Um, we went from 0 0.0023. Now we've got another zero in there, 0 0.00095. This is a general trend with reaction rates. We said earlier that the rate of a reaction depends on the concentration of the reactants. As time goes by, the concentration is dropping. So if the concentration has gone down, the reaction rate will also go down. So let me just kind of make a note of that. Um, as time passes, the, the concentration of reactants drops, and then that means that the rate consequently drops as well. Okay, next slide. 